Hey everybody, this is Volen in Pursuit of Art. Got a question from Celine in the comments of one of the previous videos. And Celine is having a problem that I think about 99% of all people that have ever tried to do anything creative have had. I definitely have struggled with this for a very long time. I thought there was no solution to it. I thought you either had it or you didn't. And this is also when I work with people one-on-one, -on -one, either ongoing or just for one session, this is the thing that I would say is most commonly discussed. A lot of times if someone hits me up for just one session, we'll most likely talk about this thing. So she asks about creating things from the imagination. And I really think imagination needs to be redefined. It's just people have come to mean so many different things by the imagination that I think at this point, it's almost dangerous to use it because it gives you ideas about how things should work that is just unrealistic. So let me just read you her question and then we'll dive into this thing. And I hope I'm able to cover it properly. If you have any questions, let me know because this is probably worth making even multiple videos on because it's a really, really deep issue. And a lot of people quit right at this stage. When they get to this point and they cannot solve that problem, a lot of people will walk away just out of extreme frustration and anxiety oftentimes because they just cannot make what they want to be making and they do not know what the solution is. So a really crucial juncture. So let's have a look at the question. I've edited it a bit, so I make it a bit um, more encompassing for other people. So here it is. I'm getting really frustrated by this problem I'm having. It's been a while now that I started to do daily studies, especially anatomy and more cinematic scenes. My goal is to create images that can provoke an emotion, thoughts and such, and create reliable moments of a person's life. I have certain things that I want to say. I just feel completely empty when trying to paint from imagination. I want to be a professional illustrator, artist, I need to practice those things, and I'm feeling like I'm going backwards, although I'm working hard on my skills and draw at least four hours a day. I really need your help. Well, I hope I can help. A couple of things I wanna point out that we will discuss a little bit further as we go in the video is that the things that Celine is trying to attack are realistic problems, anatomy, cinematic scenes. She wants to make reliable moments of a person's life. That's what she called them. So you're basically going for a realistic style. What you're describing is based in the physical world, right? It's not imagination as in a fat pony that's made up of ice cream that flies through your dreams and hits people when they're being mean to you. That's really not although that's a good thing to have in mind, it's not really what she's going for. It's just really based on physical reality, which means that there has to be a certain grounding of your images in that same reality. A lot of times what people miss when they are trying to do stuff from imagination is that very process. Okay, let's just back up and let me just read to you a definition of imagination and let's just deconstruct this problem what is imagination exactly like what do people mean when they say that versus what is it actually a tool for imagination is a tool it can give you a certain product but then it's really up to a process that you're going to use to take that product and really refine it into whatever you would like it to be so let's break this thing down imagination the definition of it is the creative ability to form images, ideas, and sensations in the mind without direct input from the senses, such as hearing or seeing. So it's an ability to form images, ideas, and sensations in the mind. An artist's job, by definition, or let's call that an illustrator's job, because an artist, they could be abstract, which is why I made a point at the beginning that Celine is doing anatomy, and cinematic scenes. She wants to make realistic scenes. So we're pretty much pushing the abstract away. I'm sorry, seven people that might be watching this right now. So we're looking for realistic rendering. We're looking for real world faithful representations. So one more time, it's the 
images and ideas and sensations in the mind. An artist's job by definition is to pull things out from the mind and present them to the eye. Your job isn't to just come up with something. Your job is to have something that it might come from someone else. Someone might give you, if you're an illustrator, someone will give you a concept that they need presented. They are essentially employing you for your ability to take an idea and translate it from mind to eye. An artist or illustrator or concept artist job is to take things and translate them from the mind's eye, which is normally very fuzzy. Images aren't really crisp, detailed. They're just impressions. And really anyone can have that impression, which is why oftentimes artists are employed by non-artists. Someone that doesn't know how to do it, but has just some sort of impression will hire you to do the translation for them. Your job then isn't really... So this is a tricky point over here, so just stick with me. I'm just going to go down this route so I make the point that I'm trying to make. Your job isn't necessarily to just imagine things. Your job is to be able to deconstruct the perceptual system, how we see stuff, how our brains perceive visual information and how they interpret it. Your job is to be able to reverse engineer that so that you can create something, you can take this impression or idea and really flesh it out. Put it in our physical world. Take it from the mind's blurry eye and make it perceivable by every other person out there. So your job really is grounded in a ton of research and a lot of physical reality. Knowing how materials look, knowing about anatomy, knowing about the scenes that you're painting and studying right now. But it's really the reliable process of how you take one and translate it through your skill set into a perceivable image. So again, a lot of people just use the imagination just as this idea generation thing. And I think they mistake having the idea for actually having executed it. You're missing that entire middle portion, which is the biggest part of the work. Getting an idea, I would say it's about 2% of the entire job. Just having an idea is about 2%. As soon as you came up with that earth shattering, ground moving idea that you really want to execute on that is really your dream, you've just been 2% out of the entire thing. You still have the other 98% which is just executing on that idea, figuring out what you don't know, figuring out what your imagination couldn't really fill in for you and going out and getting that research, getting that training honing your skills, polishing your tools, maybe learning some new tools. You might have an idea right now, and I'm sure that at one point you did, that will take you five years to execute on. Like when you decided, I want to be an artist. Hey, say hello to five years of suffering and hard work, especially if you're older. So if you have to have a job and go and work every day and then you also have to work another 40 hours to improve and you're ambitious and you want to know all the tools and you want to know how to design and you want to know how to paint and you want to know how to do creatures and humans and every say hello to five years of non-stop work. And then once you've done that, say hello to marketing and say hello to other stuff that you'll have to do. So that one idea that you just had that's not even 2%. I gave it more credit than it deserves. That's just coming up with something, that idea of I want to be an artist, for instance, or just whatever image you would like to create, that idea by itself, up to 2%, maybe if it's a great idea, it's 2%. Let's call it that. It's 2% if it's really awesome. If it's never been seen before, it's 2%. Like when Feng Zhu says about making stuff out of bubblegum, his favorite analogy. So if you want to make a city out of bubblegum, you get the 2% credit of your accomplishment being done, 2%. And then worst case scenario is probably 0 0.001. That's how much work just got done with that imagination. So what I'm trying to say here, and I'm exaggerating it, is that people are treating, in my opinion, the imagination as something, they're treating it as more than it's actually worth. And again, that's really not a great way to put it, 
But what I'm trying to make a point here for is that just because you've imagined something doesn't mean that you now have a product, doesn't mean that you now have this thing that you can present. And I'm understating the imagination here because a lot of people get so involved with the fact that they cannot produce what's in their head right now that they quit. A lot of people get too frustrated. They just have these things that they want to be saying and they want to be saying them now. And the fact that they can't is so incredibly frustrating and painful to them that they quit or they turn this into some sort of anxiety that every time they sit down, they just, they're paralyzed. They can't do anything because they've had expectations be so high for so long that now when they sit to do their thing and they know how it's going to go because they are not developing a process to translate from the mind's eye to the physical eye, they don't have the skill set to do that and they don't know how to turn that into a reliable process. They don't know how to do research or they don't know how to translate that research into their own image, let's say. So it will just become such a painful process that they will quit. So really what I'm trying to say here, and again, like excuse the pushing of the fact and the kind of devaluing of the imagination, because what I'm trying to say here is that for a really long time, you will have to put your imagination away and really focus on skills. You will have to just build a skill set that you can use to translate those ideas into concrete images. So you will have to spend time on fundamentals. You will have to learn about materials. You'll have to learn about geometry, about perspective, about lighting, about value. You'll have to learn your tools. You'll have to learn your brushes, your 3D, whatever tools you end up using and putting together you'll have to learn how those work and you'll have to put away your ideas for a time because you really have to be focused on just developing those translation skills. Because if a writer comes up with an idea, they are potentially in a better situation to write about it and have a product than we are as artists because an artist isn't trained normally in a language. So our language is pictures. We have images that are what we use to show people, to communicate. A writer will have gone through school more often than not. And they will have written, even if it's not creative writing, they will have just written. They have that tool that they need to use to write that's been developed. For us, if you now, just starting in art, have things that you would like to say, you will probably have to realize that there's gonna be a gap of at least a couple of years that you're gonna have to learn your language. I always equate this to Imagine that you want to be a writer as well, but you want to be a writer. You want to be writing in Japanese. Obviously, this doesn't work if you're Japanese, so I'm sorry. You imagine that you maybe want to write in Bulgarian or Turkish, right? So imagine that you want to be a writer and you're writing in Japanese. That's, what, that's the language you want to be writing in. So not only do you have to learn how to be a writer, which the equivalent for that is we have to learn how to tell visual stories, but you also have to learn the language which is why the gap. So you first focus potentially on just learning the language because otherwise you have no tool to communicate with. So you learn the language first, you learn your fundamentals, you learn how to translate from the mind's eye to the physical eye, and then you're able to tell your stories. But there is this huge gap. And why this gap happens in the first place, in my opinion, what happened when I was starting out? I would watch people like Feng Zhu who are incredibly, incredibly highly skilled. 10, 15 plus years of professional practice. Professional, not just learning, professional practice. Any problem that this guy has to solve today, he's probably solved at least 50 times before. So paint a tree, yeah, no problem. I've done 5,000 of those. Paint me a crazy alien, yeah, okay, no problem. Do you want a tree sticking out his head? Because I've done 50,000 of those crazy city bubblegum made or whatever you would like no problem done that uh, crazy robot made out of rusted soda cans no problem done that crazy robot from NASA super opposite design direction yeah no problem I've done twice as many of those their way of what they're working with is completely different to what we have so their process of work is completely different to how we should work it's as if when you're watching a Feng Zhu video or anyone that's really high level pro and most of the original videos on YouTube were from very high level pros because they were just people who were at a position that had so much skill 
that they just started recording and people flocked to them because they recognized the skill. But what people don't recognize is that the way that they execute on their work is different to how we can do it because they are just working with a lot more than we have. Imagine never been in the gym before and you just watch videos constantly of people lifting one ton at a time, just deadlifting or leg press, whatever. But people are just lifting at least a thousand kilograms on anything that they put on. That's your idea of the gym, is that you go there and you have to lift at least a thousand kilos on an exercise. Then you go there and you try it. Obviously, you can't even move the bar. And you find that your place, your level, is that you can lift the bar. Like, that's it. You can't move the bar with the thousand kilos on, but if you took all the thousand kilos off, the 980 kilos, you can lift the bar, kind of, but it's heavy, right? The bar is heavy. You've never done this before. You're not in great shape. You haven't done it. Bar is heavy. And then there's people next to you that they're wrapping the bar with the weights on the bar. They're wrapping it with tape so they don't fall off. Just too much weight on the bar. Hey, the bar can't possibly, it's just filled up. That's what Feng Zhu's brain is like. His brain is just filled with all that visual information. The visual library is so strong and the experience is so rich that he can just pull that 1000 kilos without even thinking about it. Looking at you, he might also think, I really don't know why I can do it and why you can't do it. Because at this stage, it's just become so natural after about 15 years of practice. It's just like language, like me speaking to you. When I first started speaking English, I, couldn't, I could barely speak. I wasn't trained to speak. I knew the words, so I could read and I could write, but I couldn't speak at all. So it's that process of translation, again, that needs to happen. It's the middle process that takes the longest to do. So I knew English, I'd learned it, and then when I went to speak to people, I couldn't do it. I needed to learn to translate one from the other. I had to learn to do, and it took me a while. Like that took me several years to get to the point where I can just say anything without really thinking about it. There's always the middle. And it gets missed out again because when you watch someone that's very high level, they don't have reference a lot of times. They are not using research. They are just pulling. They're pulling that thousand kilos. They're pulling from that huge bank, that huge reserve of information that they've stored previously. And they're just pulling on that and you cannot see it. So you have this illusion that the imagination just supplies you with the correct information that you need. And that is completely wrong. And I was under the impression when I was watching Feng Zhu, I started trying to paint like him because I had no idea how to do it. And he was an example for me, right? I'm looking at this guy who's top level, amazing. He can do anything. So obviously I'm emulating what he's doing. And it was a big, big mistake because I ended up automating the way that he paints. So what I mean by that is that I would just try and make very fast brush strokes, just put what seemed to me as random colors and forms down and then I would later try and refine them into something and it never worked. It never worked because I just do not have the mental repository that he does. And you can think of it as he has error checking mechanisms for each and every shape or color that he puts down. He knows how he can fashion it into something else. Whereas for me, they're just random. I cannot see anything, any potential in it. I just see random color, random shape and I do not have enough visual information to be able to pull out. I don't have the translation skills to be able to take it from the mind's eye into any sort of physical form. I do not have the experience, the expertise, or the practice. So, summing up a little bit of all that info, a lot of people mistake the imagination for this precise information-giving tool that it's just not. The imagination, if you're just starting out, is normally just an empty bank account. You fill it through your studies, you fill it through your research, and then you can pull on what's in there. So the imagination, and I normally actually substitute it for knowledge, when some are just drawing from experience. So when I talk to students about this stuff, people that I work with, I would normally try and stay away from the imagination word altogether. And I would just call it drawing from experience or drawing from knowledge, understanding what you're doing, not imagination. Because I've also given people assignments 
and say, okay, let's do some material studies. I want you to do these and then show them to me next time. And then people come back and I look at their work and ask them like, okay, how did this go? And they say, well, I tried to close my eyes and imagine what this is supposed to look like. And this is what it came out as. And if you give someone a very specific, let's say you have an assignment to do a leather material rendering. If you close your eyes and try to imagine it, why would you imagine leather? Like that's probably right behind you. I could just go there and use my couch that's not real leather but looks like leather. I could, I'm better off using that as my reference and as my research and base my rendering off on that rather than just, clo okay, leather. So it's like all cracked up, kind of reflects light. But then I don't really know what reflected like light looks like. I can imagine what it looks like. But why would you do that? If someone gave you a test right now, top two plus two, that's your test. That's your entire test. Okay, two plus two, two plus two. Okay, think, imagine, let the creative juices flow. Okay, two plus two. Okay, I'm seeing a big red fat pony, a big red fat pony. That two plus two is a big red fat pony driving a car, speeding, but not being chased. And that is what world peace is like. Fail, right? Sadly, for all the other people in the same room that were not imagining the same thing, two plus two is probably just four. So if you're looking for your leather rendering on your character, just which way is it? Just go over there and just look at your couch for 10 minutes, take a photo of it, put it on your screen and look at it while you're rendering their costume or whatever it is that your anatomy problem that you might be having, if you can't rotate your character, we'll just have a look at the insertions. If take that same pose yourself, take a photograph of that same pose, analyze what are the different things that are happening. Just go and research it. So I've struggled again, like this was a huge problem for me. I couldn't do a single thing without, from imagination, right? From knowledge, from experience. I couldn't do a single thing because I just didn't have any. The more things that you put in there, the more that you can draw on them, the, the more that you can dispense with the research. A great quote from Jingna, Jingna Zhang, I don't know how to say her name, I took a course from her, artistic photography, and she said that lack of experience can be made up for by research, by being prepared. So I took that to heart very much, and then lack of experience, absolutely, I have very little experience in what I'm trying to do, but I'm going to be as prepared in it as I can possibly get. I'm going to do my research. I'm going to find relevant information. I'm going to get all these things that are going to help my piece. And I'm not just going to rely on my lack of experience to guide me because that's going to be my big fat red pony crashing its car. Like it's just not going to happen. I'm going to find the answers that I need and I'm going to draw from them to form an educated guess on what I'm trying to make. I think this thing is getting a bit too long and really would probably warrant multiple videos rather than one. I'm just trying to smash everything into one to kind of also give you a route out of where you are right now, potentially. So if you're just trying these things, you're desperate, you don't know what to do, hopefully you understand now that the imagination is just an origination tool. It's not a translation tool, it's an origination tool. You come up with something, it's kind of fuzzy, it's kind of an idea, it's really not an image the middle the middle part is where it gets translated into the image that's when you use your artistic skill to take it from here and execute and put it into physical reality so that other people can see it and understand it so imagination doesn't give you correct answers it just gives you impressions some sort of idea a vague notion of something and that's what it should be treated as just something that can give you a vague notion so don't think of it as an answer giving machine is just a an idea generation machine. 2% to 0.002% is how much info it gives you for the end product. For me, when I really sucked at it, what really helped me is just understanding that I needed to have some sort of reliable system. Look up all the answers that I'm looking to solve. If you have an idea for a scene, so let's just give you a concrete example before we close. If you have a concrete scene in mind, we have a character, you have an environment, you have a city, design, whatever it may be. It's not going to come together 
just because you kind of sort of saw a fuzzy image. Go and look up some reference. If it's a mechanical design, go and look up how things work. How are they put together? What is your thing supposed to do? What are other things that do similar functions? What do they look like? If you have a character and they're taking a certain pose, what anatomy is suitable for that character? So are they gonna be big? Are they gonna be small? Find yourself that reference. Find yourself the big guy, find yourself the small guy. See what the rotation is. What exactly is their pose and try and find the reference as close as possible to that. Take it yourself if you have to. Get a friend or shoot yourself. I don't mean with a gun. So do that, get some info. Do it as, as best as you possibly can. Just lack of experience can be overcome by proper preparation. Concrete steps is just work on your process. Don't rely on the imagination, use reference and use research. And I suppose this will probably just need to be its own video. I will not be able to give the info here, it's already too long. So hit me up with some questions. Let me know what of this made sense. Let me know what you could use maybe some elaboration on. Let me know what your thoughts are. As always, I may be wrong and I'm not giving advice. I am just giving you my opinion and what's worked for me. My experience is what I'm offering. So I think that's about it. Make sure to share this with anyone that you think may benefit from it. Put it up on forums if you can or anywhere online. It would really help because I just do not have physically the time to be sharing these and I'm sure we could be reaching a lot more people than we are right now. So share this with every single person you meet, just anyone. I don't even care if they're trying to shoot you. Just give them the link to the video, then just run away. And if you can't run away, you're a trooper. Thank you. You can find me on Instagram. You can look up on the site where there's also a blog. In the sketchbook, you can see over five years of improvement, which I've put together for you guys. 2005 at the top and horrible beginnings at the very, very bottom. You can go through. That's one of the things I really wanted to have when I was starting out is someone's progress. So you can have a look at these. Hit me up with some comments. I'm trying to reply to every single person out there because I know what it's like to not be replied to. And give me your questions so I can also put them into videos. And the videos are a bit sparse. I'm really pressed for time and I'm trying to figure out how to juggle all these things. But when I have something to share, I will try and hopefully give you some value. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this helped. Let me know what you think and I will see you soon. All the best.